Yeah. You will. It took me forever to sleep last night. Same, actually, I've just been away for ages. It's really annoying. It actually gets bright so early. <laughs> You make me happy. Yeah. You are a bay. Look at that for service. Triage HQ fam. Show the people what's on for breakfast, Larry. We got some steak on a dirty plate. Cool. Steak for breakfast. You're really living that life, aren't you? Got that ball of life, man. <laughs> it's too juicy. And what time are you in training clients from this morning? Half five. Half five. So, since me and Paddy aren't working, as PTs one to one at the moment, we're going to be going and fucking hustling in Paddy's house. So we're going to be doing some triage work in Paddy's house while Paddy trains or while Larry trains clients, and then we're going to meet up and do some video content and train ourselves. So that is our plan for the day, and we will check in with you guys. I was like, that was the chairs. Retarded because, oh shit, I can't say retarded. Sorry. No, you're, you're allowed to say retarded. If you're offended by me saying retarded, I apologize. And if my parents are watching this, oh, whoa, I whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> but look, we don't mean it in any sort of uh, derogatory term. Offensive, derogatory way. It's retarded just, just means delayed. Yeah, it just means delayed, like development. Of it doesn't something. even mean development. It just means delayed. There you go, just the retardation. You like, are delayed. Like tardy, you know, like in fire America. Fire retardant. No, you delay know. the progress of the fire. Exactly. Like, there you know, you in America, they're like, oh, you're tardy, you're late. <laughs> like, uh, irrelevant to irrelevant. our conversation. What we're talking about today is what, Gary? Um, about optimizing, or not optimizing, kind of making your diet a bit easier, even. So, not even optimal, but just. Easier and how do we go better. about that? Huh? Like, what, like, what are we talking about when we say getting our diet easier? Is like, it, so you know, obviously, like we we're always on about, and everyone's kind of always on about the whole macros and calories thing. Like, like you know, if you're watching this, probably that calories are the most important thing when it comes to your weight loss or weight gain, any change in weight. Yeah. Um, but like thermodynamics. Yeah. Yes. So like everyone knows that, and we've known that for decades, but it hasn't actually changed like how our like, practices yeah our practices so like you know obesity is still progressing and people are still really struggling to lose weight so obviously it's not as simple as that because humans like to eat mm. um, and humans Ooh. need to feel full to stop eating or feel satisfied to some degree so there are a lot of strategies you can put in place to actually make sure you get a bit more full in response to your the food that you eat okay so when we're talking about maximizing our food um are we talking about making ourselves less hungry or are we talking about you know um, how to minimize the calories we consume or both a combination of both <laughs> okay so, so what are we doing essentially what we're looking to do is maximize our food volume or minimize our calorie density okay so, and what's the strategy for that like what like is that choose certain foods yeah so certain foods like for example like you can look at like the quantity of two different foods so like let's say peanut butter for example okay. a, a tablespoon of peanut butter could be easily 200 to 300 calories depending on the size it could be even more if you're really keeping it up whereas if you get like a salad a full a full bag of salad look at the amount of food volume or how much volume yeah. like space that takes up whereas that might literally be like 50 calories max so like there's a big big difference there and that also like relates to how we feel in response to food so like in your stomach your stomach is just this kind of j-shaped bag and within the lining of your stomach you've got these barrel receptors so barrel always oh, relates baby, to, yes. to pressure so as the as the, the more food volume you eat the barrel receptors then are going to send signals to your brain to tell you that oh this is stretching at which point we get a cessation in the release of ghrelin which is that hunger hormone okay so therefore like the amount of 
volume in your stomach is a pretty important thing when it comes to feeling full. So if you can choose foods that aren't as calorie dense, so the amount of calories per bite is a very simple way of thinking it, thinking about it rather, um, it's a pretty good strategy. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like digestion is a weird one in terms of, it, it, like even though we're saying it's all just calories in, calories yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it is a bit more than that. Like you could choose foodstuffs that make your diet harder like make adherence harder to your diet like if you choose really high sugary stuff low uh, satiety stuff we'll say like it's gonna be so much harder to stick to your diet and again it comes down to like the way your digestion works you know it's not just your body sensing the calories like that's a huge part of it but it's also your body or sensing the food you know like you always have to think humans eat food not calories not macronutrients like the food is what we're actually talking about you know um, so right, so people get that, yeah. you know, choose foods that make it easier to stick to your dieting goals. Um, whether that's choosing more vegetables, again, low calorie option, uh, whether that is avoiding high calorie, yeah. low volume foods, Whoa, we're getting on here, yeah. uh, choosing, yeah, so low calorie, high volume foods, yeah. that's what we want to do, that makes it a great option, um, but what else can we do? <clears throat> Cooking methods, like... You know, should we switch cooking methods? Yeah, so there are actually like a lot of kind of really simple ways to, to adjust your cooking methods to reduce your calories. Because like, you know, it's almost like habitual in like a standard Irish household to just like, you know, grab the sunflower oil, pour a bit on as you cook your meal. And people don't realize that like, that can easily be as much as 30 milliliters of oil oh, easy. that you're adding to a meal, at least. Like I've seen a lot more. And that is gonna add up to about like 270 calories. Like that's completely unnecessary in the context of your meal. So like if you have like some healthy meal like chicken and, and vegetables yeah. that could have only been like 200 calories itself, you've then like more than doubled the, the caloric quality, quantity Quantum, rather yeah. of, uh, of that meal just through how you've actually cooked just it. Just from so, oils, yeah. You know, so, simply removing that and adding things like fry light, you know. Yeah, like zero say. calorie type sprays or one calorie type sprays or even not using uh, like oils and butters and stuff to cook your food. Like some things just don't need it. Yeah, know? like I know like a lot of fucking personalities you'll see online. Like it's pretty obvious if you've, if you've seen any of his stuff. Like uh, the coconut oil thing. Yeah, co yeah. You know? <laughs> on everything. Yeah, coconut oil on literally everything. As if it doesn't, as if as the if calories don't add up. Yeah. Like, not a good idea. Yeah, but like even... <laughs> Show the people this. Guys. Look in my land. Guys. But anyway, yeah, so, uh, but even choosing like cooking your food, like not frying it, like cooking it in the oven rather than, you know, frying it, you know, even boiling stuff rather than frying. Like if you're cooking vegetables, like boiling your vegetables or steaming your vegetables rather than like frying them up in a lot of oils, like definitely going to be a better option calorie wise anyway. So yeah, so people can get it in their heads, they can choose better food choices, stay away from you know the low calorie option, or sorry, stay away from the, the high, high calorie, calorie low satiety, yeah. low volume options, and choose more options that are conducive to them feeling full. That's obviously gonna help mm. adherence. Then also choosing cooking methods that you know don't make adherence hard or yes. don't make those calories rack up without a concomitant uh, raise or rise in satiety, you know? Um, Do you want a hold it for a while? Anything else? No, fuck, I need the, I need the delta <laughs> work sure, here. Yeah. Sore. <laughs> right, my, my, kind of, my favorite foods to actually, like, you know, maximize my food volume and satiety without the big increase in calories would probably be any sort of zero fat Greek yogurt, preferably the high protein ones. Um, like a full tub of of fat, yeah, that you know, and it's a pretty big tub, is only something like 275 calories for the whole tub. Um, and fruits as well. I'm a big fruit person, yeah. um, so like strawberries are actually ridiculous. Berries <laughs> like in general, yeah, berries in, in general, and strawberries, watermelon, so so low in calories for the amount of food volume that you get, and you're getting additional micronutrients in there as well, which is good. Um, and then what else do I have? Vegetables, of course. Vegetables, vegetables all over the shop. Yeah, we eat a lot of vegetables. Um, and one of my favorite snacks is actually just either, you know, the little manger two or sugar snap pea packets or the or cherry tomatoes. So I eat an cherry insane tomatoes, yeah. amount of cherry tomatoes because very, very low calorie density and you actually get quite a lot of volume. So you feel quite full. That actually reminds me of something on my list. 
and um, what are your thoughts on you know you're having cravings you're feeling I need some calories or I need some something but you know I've eaten my calories for the day and you know maybe getting some sugar zero jelly. sugar no sugar free jelly for one but like zero calorie drinks like yeah. say uh, Pepsi Max or something like Pepsi Max is my favorite I know people yeah. people are a Coke fan yeah, or no, something I'm a Pepsi Max fan as well Pepsi I Max is where it's, it's even tastier than the original I, I would agree yeah smoother has that just well, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, like so. Obviously, like anytime we have anything that seems a bit too good to be true, um, in that it tastes good but doesn't have the calories, people get kind of freaked out. So you know, you'll have heard that sweeteners are more dangerous than sugar and all this blah blah blah, and they're going to make you fat. Um, but like the only kind of real concern when it comes to zero calorie drinks, like for me, like get, telling someone to drink them on a diet, would be that you can get kind of more conditioned as such. Yeah towards sweeter tastes um, whoa so obviously if, if you're always relying on like sweet tastes to give you pleasure or to give you a reward then that's not a good thing to be conditioning yourself towards so it really does depend on what type of person you are but in general if you find that having a zero calorie drink is gonna satisfy your craving and allow you to be more adherent to your diet I'd say absolutely go for it what do you think yeah I would 100% agree and um, like okay, it's a it's a crutch, you know. Yeah. So if it's some if you're using it to cover up some systemic issue, yeah. Then I wouldn't be a fan. But if you're using it to say transition to a lower calorie diet or to manage cravings and stuff, that's perfect. Or again, if you're like, oh, I'm out for dinner with my significant other or family yeah. or whatever, and everyone else is ordering like high, high calorie foods, high yeah. calorie drinks, and everything, and you're like, yeah, look, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna get that. Uh, By all means, enjoy it. Fucking enjoy it. You know, stick to your goals, but enjoy yourself overall. So, I think they're a great option as well. Chewing gum as well. Yeah. It's actually a good one. You know, like there's actually chewing to both ways. Yeah, I was Some people, say that. It works both ways. Like that cephalic phase yeah. digestion stuff. Um, like some people chew chewing gum and they get a relief from their their hunger, their cravings, and that kind of stuff. Whereas some people chew chewing gum and it makes them feel hungry. Like one of my friends, I remember he was telling me he has chewing gum, and then literally half an hour after having chewing gum, he's starving, like proper, like starving. Like he's like, I need food. And again, there's all this insulin yeah, and stuff. We actually wrote it. Well, I wrote an yeah. article. Uh, it's in the the triage militia about insulin and stuff, and I mentioned that. Yes. But for some people, that is a real thing. Like their their insulin Definitely. levels go all over the place because of that digestion, that taste of something, and it actually makes dieting harder. So you have to kind of, you know, experiment with yourself. But chewing gum, it's always an option. Some people as well brush their teeth to stay on track with their diet. Yeah, you I ever actually heard that? think that's a really good strategy at the end of the day. Like if you find that you know you've eaten your last meal and you always know that you get hungry after that. Go and brush your teeth because at least, like, firstly, you've kind of like your your mouth's fresh, and any taste of food that might be driving you to want to eat more of that food is now gone. But also, it's almost like a sense of your day closure, you know. Yeah, so done. it's like my day is done. That's it, because that's kind of what you do at the end of the day. Like, you know, when you get into bed at night, you're typically not thinking about, oh, I want to get up and cook a meal. You know, it doesn't really happen. So it's again, it's kind of that closure thing. Yeah. This is what we're going to talk about making your diet easier. So people kind of start their diet and they go all in from the start yeah. you know they change everything like 100 percent their diet is completely different but like what we use like usually like to do is start with small changes or start general and then get specific you know so uh, for example if you're drinking a load of your calories dropping out liquid calories is a good option to kind of keep you yes. on track you know um, and again if you're like oh, okay I'm eating good foods and I just don't know what quantity I'm eating them in. Well, starting tracking uh, your food, your quantity of food, that's probably a great start. Yes. You know, but it doesn't mean you have to change up everything. No. You know, so what are your thoughts on, say, starting the diet general and then getting very specific? Yeah, I think that's a great idea because, like, one of the things, like, I like to kind of analogize when I start with a client is that, you know, we kind of, I, I like to let clients fall on their face at the start. Oh, <laughs> I know, yeah, I'm actually a I fan that, of like, like yeah. throwing them in the deep end. Yeah, I know that sounds bad, but like it's one of the reasons I don't like really like meal plans. I think meal plans are a pretty poor idea because what you've done is give someone a predetermined structure as to how they should live their life. So yeah. instead, what I would like, what I like to do is, you know, give people their guidelines and stuff, like the, the kind of general stuff that I feel they'll need, and then let them fall flat on their face for the first one or two weeks. And from there, what we begin to do is go down 
more specific paths. So like, where does this person actually need to kind of clean up in terms of like, what are they failing? What with? mistakes are yeah, they making? So like, essentially, uh, most people will start around the same place, but everyone will go in their own different direction. And as like 12, 16, 20 weeks progresses, that person, person B is now far away from person A because they went on different routes. So yeah. I would completely agree with, you know, the whole starting general and then getting more specific as you move along. Yeah, and talking about that, like throwing them in the deep end, it's actually a really good process in terms of the more the client learns, the easier it is to get long-term progress. Like giving them a meal plan might actually be easier short-term. You know? and, and I can actually honestly like vouch for that in that when, when I used to give meal plans during coaching, I would get better short-term results. Yeah. You know, it's not, sometimes two to six clients, weeks. Yeah. So like, two to six weeks, it's like boom, the results are sick. But I found that you know, actually taking the time to to educate and to guide, yeah. which is actually what personal trainers are supposed to do, not give meal plans. Um, then that actually works out much better in the long term and people actually appreciate it more. So you know, the initial satisfaction you get when you receive a meal plan, you think it's great because you're so happy, but like 12 weeks down the line, you'd rather be the person that has learned has the knowledge yeah, to, like, toward like long-term change as opposed to the person that's now struggling to adhere to the meal plan that was built for them. Yeah, especially if they have no input in the meal plan. You know, yes. it's like, here is foods you're supposed to eat and you're like, well, I hate strawberries yeah. or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, like, to be fair, this. a lot of coaches do set up meal plans really well for clients, but at the same time, no, I just think I it's not a long-term no strategy rest. at all. take like most of my squats to be honest in terms of how I feel it so that feels much better. Why Keep in mind I can squat like like 140 for eight in a regular squat is like my best. Why are you elevating the heels with those yokes? Um, essentially when we allow for like when we elevate the heel it's kind of why we wear squat shoes in the first place. It, it allows you to let the knee travel further over the toe so as if you have more dorsiflexion range you can hear Larry shouting in the back. Taking it easy. Larry's gonna work. So essentially like if you consider like the ankle joint, so have a look. Normally, like we're limited in how far we can go forward. But the more you elevate your heel, the more you can let that knee go forward. So what that does is let us bend our knee more or flex it more. And then that's taking the quads through a much larger range of motion, right to their point where, where they're at their weakest. So if you're gonna try this out, prepare to uh, let your ego down. <laughs> Be humbled. <laughs> uh, so yeah, give it a go.
Just got a delivery from the guys over at Body Fuels who are very kindly looking after us. So, ah, since I just moved out of home, this makes life much easier since I'm an incompetent 22 year old who can't cook for himself. Mm, aware. Oh, but in all seriousness, they do come in very, very handy, and as you see now, they're quite tasty. Too. So, let's go through what we got. I got some new meals this time that I haven't had before. So we've got a pesto chicken salad, so that's a kind of a lower carb option. So we've got chicken, pesto, sun-dried tomatoes, feta, onion, and some lettuce. So so that, yeah, that's like probably one of my favorite meals that I've gotten. Um, what other ones we got? We got, so mince and sweet potato, that's actually spicy mince, really, really tasty. Um, lean as well, 95%. Um, so they're kind of just the staples. Then we've got this chicken and couscous, chicken couscous salad, which I haven't actually had before, but again, it looks really good, um, quite light. All of the meals are kind of floating around the range of like 300 to 600 calories, and with the customized ones, you can actually choose your own quantity, so like, you know, that's very, very handy, especially for people like us who are, you know, on, di on diets where we're tracking macros and we want to actually be uh, specific. So, got a few extra veg um, with some of those meals. That's a chicken and sweet potato one. So spicy chicken breast, I think that's Cajun chicken breast, actually it was one of the special meals. Um, and the last meal, some salmon. So Cajun salmon, really, really nice. I actually only started eating salmon last week. Um, so I'm surprised that I actually enjoyed it, but it is really, really You nice. don't like fish, do you? No, I don't like fish. Generally, don't eat any seafood. I just started eating salmon. Um, I've had three meals of salmon so far, it's going well. But yeah, that's the body fuels range, they're, the, they're probably my favorite meals, all of those there. And if you're interested in getting stocked up, then use triage 10 for 10% off. Are you gonna get massive now? These meals are Larry's secret. That, isn't that what he said? He actually did say that. That's what he said, so I'm actually eating all of these now as my post-workout meal. Um, all of them? All of them, yeah. Do you once. get one of these boxes every day? What do you mean every day? I get five a day. Five, oh, five. Me five meals a day. This is meal three. So all of these.